So it's been a few days. And that's mainly because I've got a little bit frustrated. You can see I made multiple mistakes here. One, I drilled, pre-drilled the hole, but then I placed the router a bit skew, so I have this horrible mark. I just realized an even bigger mistake. Routed out the wrong side. This should be on the back. Finally, that's done. So hours and hours, days and days and weeks and weeks of planning. Literally, it's been quite a while since I last recorded for this project as I literally ran through two batteries, sanding each one of them. It, it's quite a lot of effort because um, if, you, if you want like hardwood to be quite smooth, you have to work your way up through the grits. And I think my orbital sander is dying. And a little advice, if you ever do buy an orbital sander, buy one that you can plug into mains, not battery powered. They're useful battery powered, but if you have a lot of sanding to do, and this has happened a few times, the batteries just don't last long enough, you need to have quite a lot of batteries. And the reality is, it also makes it really heavy if you have these big batteries that I have. So I think if I buy another one, it'll definitely be a plug-in one. I must probably use this one for smaller jobs. Anyway, back to assembly. We are now ready to assemble these because we've sanded them and they're all good to go. And this is the step that you guys have to pay a lot of attention, and particularly I'm talking about you, Lizzie and Charlotte. You have to pay a lot of attention now so that you know exactly how to assemble it. Don't worry, it's not that difficult. Okay, so there are a few things that you need to finish this up. First is glue. I'm gonna put a link to Amazon down below in the description for what glue I use. It's just type one two. The reason you need to get it yourself is I can't really send that in a package. I'm worried about leakage and all kinds of stuff, plus, you know, liquids, etc. So it's not that expensive if you buy a small bottle. Um, just get that off, like I said, off Amazon so that we can glue this together. The other thing that you really need is clamps. Now, you can buy these big fancy hand, you know, hand pressurizing clamps, etc. Um, these aren't that expensive, but it's more expensive most probably than you would like, so don't, you don't need to worry about that. I think small clamps like these, if you just get a couple of them, um, that, that'll that be good. And they, they, they're fairly cheap, you can get them at all, you know, big box stores or again, Amazon right now is the best place, I guess. And, and that's about it. I will also send you some sawdust from the sander from each of the different types of wood. This is to fill in any gaps. I, I'd like to just remind you, I'm new at this, I, I, and I do a lot of by hand things, so there, there might be the odd, you know, gap in bet between joints when we glue it up, and you just use the mixture, which I'll show you in, in the one I'm assembling of the glue, mixed with the sawdust, and you fill it in, and then you sand it off. And the last thing I will do is I'll also put a strip of, most probably 180 sandpaper, um, just so you can smooth off any of the edges and then give it a final polish and Yeah, we'll be good to go But first we need to assemble it and that is a few steps. So please do pay attention That sounded very much like a teacher. I don't mean to be like that at all, but you know. <laughs> anyway, let's go Okay, so this part I've rehearsed multiple times and I keep re recording it um, it's, it's down to the assembly what I've done in my case is I've ordered my pieces of wood and how I need them for assembly. For the ones that I'll be sending, I actually put stickers on to show you exactly which piece goes where, just, just to help out with this process. I kind of wish I had done that to mine, but it's too late now. Anyway, the very first thing is you need to put the piece that has sort of the cutouts for the support beams. So that is because these define the width of this. So the best approach to start off with that is just sort of slide them in where they go. They might stick a little bit, also with transportation, you know, the wood, wood would move, so like in this case, it, it's a bit of a sticky situation. You must just wiggle it in as you need, or maybe it's probably, yeah, there we go. It might also be the wrong way around. See, this is why I should have labeled mine, but yeah, there we go. So that, that goes in, so you know, sorry about the banging. So that, that goes in there and it needs to be snug fit. You need to make sure it's flat. At this point, I do recommend to lay these in. So we haven't put any glue on yet, but 
at least put the top and the bottom one in. This, this just makes sure that these, these are aligned the way we want it. If, if you want, you can put all of them in. I will do that with this piece. Um, as the oak, the oak has actually moved quite a lot in the last two weeks. But anyway, so that'll go there. In my case, I haven't even marked the distances I need to be in, but it doesn't matter. So now you know exactly where that should fit. Perfect. Then you can remove that, or at least move it aside, and we put the glue on. So in, the easiest way is to put the glue in here, or you can spread it on this side as well. But it's super simple. You just take a little bit of this glue. I'm gonna make sure you can see that. You squirt it in there, and then you can just use your finger um, and make sure all surfaces have glue on. I mean, this isn't rocket science. So I'm not gonna harp on too much about it. Don't worry if you go a little bit over the corners, I'll show you in a second. You can pick it up with your fingers. Um, one thing that's super important to have at this point is a wet rag, and I'll show you now why. Because with a wet rag, you can just wipe, wash the glue off. I would try and wipe off as much excess at this point. So what happens is when this glue dries, it gives like a yellow tinge to it, but very, very little. But the problem is when you put, you know, oil it or varnish it, which is another thing you need, but I'll just cover that later. Um, then it doesn't take to the wood. It doesn't go in the wood and then you can see where the glue was. But yeah, so you need just a little bit of glue on that. And then you place that back where you wanted it. Um, is, is this wrong again? Did I do the wrong way around? I think I did the wrong way around. Yes. <laughs> Remember the orientation or use the stickers that I put there. So then what you do is you make sure it's aligned. Now this won't be final. At this point, you take the clamps and it's literally a case of just lift it lightly, put the clamp underneath so that this, the, the, the tightening, I actually don't know what that's called, screw I guess, is sort of in the middle of that board. And then just tighten it, but don't tighten it super Tight, just enough so that it applies pressure that it pushes the board down. You'll see there'll be squeeze out, which I'll show you here. The bottom, you can see some glue squeeze out or the top and the sides. That is a good thing. Um, we'll deal with that in a second. You then go over to the other side and move that in. Now it looks like I'm being very hasty and trying to rush this. This is more for the video, not for fear of the glue drying too quickly as um, it dries fairly quickly, but not that quickly. I mean, to fully cure, it takes at least an hour, depending on how much and how, how deep inside the wood it is, right? Then what you do is you just take your, your wet cloth, and I really recommend, you know, working away the excess. And you'll see the wood goes a different color and gives you a clue of what it'll look like when it's final. So we just do that and then make sure at the top, Wherever there's glue out, squeeze out, you do that. And then that's it. So that is all we can do right now. I would really recommend at this point is to make sure everything's flush, but then once you're happy, just let that dry. Cause that'll, that'll be fixed. That'll dry in place and keep everything sort of in shape and we'll make the next steps much easier. And the next steps will be to glue this on and that and we'll do that later. I have to wait, you won't. <laughs> See you in a second. Okay, it's been about an hour. I'm just going to remove this and that. So now at this point, this is pretty so I mean, th this glue will hold, right? So that is in place. What I want to do first, before we do all the natural, well, natural, you, you, you. The crossbars, there we go, for the medals. I am going to attach this board. Now, I'm gonna have to be honest about this. Some of these boards are warping. It's because, it, because it's taking so long and also because wood moves and depending on temperature, we've had a lot of rain. Like this oak in particular has warped quite a lot. I double checked those, there's not, there's hardly any there. There's the odd warping in, in this panel so you'll see like, some of the edges won't be quite off, so you need to clamp that in. So the idea here is, in my case, it's on this side. 
on yours, it's on the underneath side, which will make it easier um, to clamp, but in essence, it's exactly the same effect. What we need to do is we need to glue this to these pieces, but also along the bottom. So, for that, we need clamping pressures on these two sides and clamping pressure this way. Again, if you don't have enough clamps, I would focus on getting the clamping pressure to the back. And then what you can do is you can use blue tape to strap that down, which I'll, which I'll also show when I actually attach it, okay? So let me get the tape and then we'll go from there. Okay, so you can use just painter's tape or masking tape, whatever it's called. I like using the blue one because it just stands out and you can see it quite easily. And the idea is that you attach it here and go around. I'll do some to show you. But first step first, first things first rather, is we need glue. So we need to put glue on here and there. And we can be quite liberal. Um, like that. We'll have some squeeze up, but again, we can wipe that away. And Theo's just walked in. So, there, and then lastly, we put a line along the bottom. Okay, now which way did I want it to go? This way, here. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I just had to help <laughs> here. So now, what I would do is just in the middle focus, and so we tighten the masking tape there, and just literally tighten it like that. And we'll do more in a minute, but just to hold it in place for now. Um, so we will have leverage pulling it forward, so next step is you take your clamps and you tighten them down just to hold it down towards there. And the same over here. I hope you can see. Yeah. Sorry, it's a bit... I'm just move the other way. Sorry about that. And then we just tighten that down so that this gets pushed against that. Then, you should be able to lift it and have a look. Right. And at this point, if you don't have clamps, you can literally just um, do something like that to oh, strap it down. Oh, maybe a bit longer than that. Um, if you do have clamps, which I think is preferred personally, um, we can go along and clamp this down like that. So I would do it on both ends because that's where you might have the most trouble. So just hold it like that. And then on this side, we do the same. Again, it doesn't matter, oops, sorry. It doesn't matter what clamps you use. I just use these because they're easy. Obviously, get two people to do it, it'll be much, much easier. Yeah. Yep, nope. <laughs> For a second I thought, what snapped? But that was just my clamp. Um, and then I'm gonna move this all out. My word. I'm just gonna take all of these out so they get out of the way. Sorry about the noise. This is a really bad demonstration, isn't it? But yeah, so now we've clamped this down there and I will put another one in the middle. And you can see there's a bit of a gap. Um, and again, it's, you don't have to make it tight. You will, you'll see when you do this, there's like this thin little space underneath. And as you turn, it goes down and you'll have like here, some glue out. And then just clear it out. There's a trick if you have a straw, I don't have one sadly, I checked. You can bend a straw and you can use a straw to scoop up all the glue. Um, and especially in this part, it's really important because you will be able to see it otherwise. Again, you can always sand it out 
later. Um, is that? Or the other thing is you can use a card or something that just has a sharp edge. Which I don't know where I put mine. In my case, what I'll do, I'll use an old chisel just so that I can scrape out as much of the oil from the corner, uh, oil, glue from the corner. There we go. And then I'll do the same here. So I'll put, just put that in so that it doesn't shift. And there we go. We wait another little bit until this is dried and then we install the cross beams and we'll be done. Okay, it's been a while. It's been a while. There's a song there. <laughs> and there we go. That's glued on and that, that'll hold really well. Looks pretty decent. One thing I didn't do is I didn't mark this one on the distance. They all need to be from the edge, so I'm gonna just measure that in my case. Seven and a half, and wow, that's spot on. So this was the guy. It's pretty much the same thing. We're gonna put glue on both sides, put it in, clamp it, and do that for all of it. If you don't have enough clamps to clamp them all, you can either use a masking tape or do one or two at a time um, and just wait. You don't need to wait the full hour for the glue. Personally, I think half an hour should be enough to at least set it where it'll be strong enough to hold. Okay, so that's all dried. I always start with a K or so. <laughs> Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to take all the clamps off now and tidy away any squeeze out that we might have missed earlier. So, in the pack that I'll send you, I'll put two strips of sandpaper in, it's probably a bit longer than this. Um, one is 120 and one is 180. What does that mean? 120 means it's a rougher sandpaper. It's still fairly fine, 120 for woodworking, but this is a little bit rougher, and 180 is a bit finer. This will give a smoother finish. I gave you a bit higher one, like 120, if there's any, you know, lips like here or something that you need to just smooth out. Do first 120 and then follow with 180. But the idea is that we, we sand down all the surfaces just to make it nice and smooth. You know, wherever you feel like you need to tidy up with there's marks or glue, you sand it with either 120, 180. And then what I also recommend is the edges should be fairly sharp when you get it. Um, and just to make it feel smoother, just with your fingers, run across the side and just a couple of strokes, one, two, three, four. And then you'll feel, it just feels a little bit softer, but it still has that crisp look. Don't overdo it, otherwise you'll round it over. Um, so that's what I'll be doing here, is I'm going to sand all of this once over, and then that'll be pretty much it. So, after sanding it all by hand, um, we're ready to just give it a quick hoover. Now that'll sound strange, but from the sanding, there's loads of little dust that needs to come off. And I just want to reiterate, with the sanding, you don't have to sand all of it. I did give it a good sand. It's more around where there's any glue residue and to smooth out this side. I had a lot because I had to fix some gaps. I decided to leave the gaps in the bottom one, and it actually looks quite all right. I don't think I need to fix all of them. I mean, it, it's a handmade thing, right? But for the bigger gap, I needed to put something there. But yeah, so, you heard right, get the hoover and just get your standard brush attachment and hoover it off to get all the fine dust off before you apply the finish. Also, I recommend if you have a table or something that you did the sanding on, hoover all of that down so that there's no fine dust when you apply a finish to this lovely wood.
Okay, and then just to be 100% safe, I've included these tack cloths in the, in the package. Um, you must have seen me use them before if you've watched the last couple of video videos. They are just these cloths that are, they feel really weird. They're like sticking, they're clammy, I guess, I don't know. But they will take every little piece off. So this, this piece is an extra lap that I had left over. I'm gonna use this to test this new finish that I haven't used before. Um, it's Danish oil, it's very popular in the States. Um, it's easy to apply, so I'm gonna do that. However, for, for, for yours, you're more than welcome to use whatever you want. Um, you could even paint it in theory if you wanted to. I think easiest is spray varnish. Easiest in terms of applying, applying it, you just spray it on, wait for it to dry, give it another coat, maybe sand a little bit in between with, with a high grit sandpaper. Or you could use an oil, like Danish oil or linseed oil. That, that is also fairly easy, you just have to wipe it on and then let it soak in and then make sure you wipe off any of the excess. That's what I will be showing you here. And lastly, you could just use proper, you know, paint on varnish as well. Whatever, whatever you think looks the best or you prefer to do. Like I said, I think spraying or wiping on an oil is always the easiest. Super quick, the rags you use when you wipe on something should be lint-free rags. In other words, an old t-shirt or you can buy these lint-free rags, they're super cheap. But yeah, don't, don't use anything that, you know, leaves a slight drizzle. Like microfiber cloths are actually also a good option, I found. Um, but yeah, make sure the lint flee. Lint flee. <laughs> lint free. With this, you just wipe it on quite liberally. Liberally. Lib a lot. Um, and then make sure all the surfaces are covered. And then you see it's quite wet like that. You leave it for a little bit. I'm gonna rush it now, but but you then buff it out. And that's kind of the look you'll get. So I think for this oak, this looks really, really good. So I'm gonna cover this, let it soak a little bit, and then wipe it off, and I think then we're done, right? And there we go, metal rack done, and it's actually looking pretty good. I'm quite impressed, you know, especially for this being the messed up one. And I've got a metal hanging here, just so to show you how to put it up, I'm gonna hang up my 10K run metal from last year. Um, we whip it over, put the metal through the loop, and just let it dangle down. You can make it look nice if you want. And then, whoops, bang, there you go, metal rack. These are all the medals we have, and I'll be honest, none of them are mine. They're both my wife's. Um, but yeah, I think it turned out really well, especially as this is the, the damaged one. I think it looks pretty good. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the making of that. I surely did to some degree. Obviously I messed this up and, you know, I feel like normal, normally YouTubers and other people will sort of cut that out and redo it. Oh, there was part of me that really wanted to just say, okay, you know, I'm gonna, recut these pieces out and redo them but I think it's also worth showing that you can save a project right that you, you made a mistake you can save it and you know I know the mistake is there I'll see it other people will be able to see it but it's not the end of the world um, you know I handmade this so you always think of that so if you're into this and you make a mistake have a look maybe you can fix it or patch it or change your design even like like I did with the back which arguably I kind of feel like it's a nicer design on it. I kind of wish I had done all of them like that, but you know, that happens too. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and Lizzie and Lottie enjoy assembling yours. I'm gonna pack it all up now, send it via post. I don't know how long this is gonna take, especially with, with sort of the way the world is right now, but I'll try and get it to you ASAP. And I'd really appreciate either video or some photos of, of the final product at the very least. That would be fantastic. Other than that, thank you everyone, like always. Please subscribe and like, every little like helps. Um, 
I love the, doing this, it's, it's a hobby, so please support me. I mean, I get nothing out of it. I just, you know, want to make sure that I'm doing it for a reason and not just, you know, so I can record myself. <laughs> but yeah. And if you have any feedback, any questions, any comments, down below. Catch you later.